Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have Louise Robson with me from the RVC here today to talk about her vet school journey. And yeah, thanks so much for joining me today. Would you like to introduce yourself, Louise? Um, yeah, so hi, I'm Louise. Um, I'm currently a fourth year student at the RVC. Um, yeah, <laughs> nice <laughs> so, to be here. <laughs> so earlier you were telling me that uh, you just started fourth year. Oh no, you started fourth year in May. And how is the structure like? So it's slightly different, I think, to other universities um, from what I've heard. Um, so we had our third year exams at the end of April and then we start fourth year teaching straight away pretty much so that when we come back in September we've got one more term of teaching and then we have our fourth year exams in December and then that means then that we we're supposed to go on to rotations then in February but this year because of Covid ours have been delayed until April so that the okay. current final years have a time to finish theirs before we start. So what's happening now from now until April? <laughs> well <laughs> so we were meant to have mock OSCEs in okay. January but they've been cancelled because they can't do them in person so m January and February is now meant to be EMS okay. but getting an EMS placement at the moment is proving quite difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. So I know me being one of them, a lot of people are starting our final year research project early okay. just to get a head start on it, to give us something to do because I've always just sat here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because you feel like you should be doing something, but I've been quite lucky that I might have a placement coming up, but I know a lot of people okay. haven't. Okay, let's rewind back to before university so we can talk about mm -hmm. the application process. And so could you tell me about why you decided to apply to the RBC and any advice for people applying to the RBC and also like your grades and everything yeah so i did a pretty unconventional route into vet school mm -hmm. um i did a year of as levels back when as levels were examinable and it wasn't just at the end of the two years mm -hmm. and i completely messed them up um, I passed them all but didn't get the grades I knew I needed to go on and do the second year of A-levels and get into vet school. I ended up changing colleges and doing a level 3 extended diploma in animal management. Oh, cool. So I did that for two years then and got in that way, which was, yeah. <laughs> there was a time when I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get in, but I made it. <laughs> oh, nice. That's um, amazing. Yeah, so I applied to RVC Nottingham and Bristol. RVC and Nottingham both gave me interviews. Liked both the unis when I went to interview, but RVC was the only one to offer me a place, which I, I didn't mind because I loved the uni. When I visited for my interviews, I was quite convinced that it was, you know, where I wanted to end up. Yeah, I just thought the interview process itself, it didn't feel like an interview. Mm -hmm. I felt a lot more calm than I thought I would, oh. uh, just because everyone was so friendly. What was yeah. the interview like and how did you prepare for it? So it was a group interview we had a situation to talk through and then also the MMIs it was seven stations I want to say did you have um, stations where you had to answer questions or was it more practical practical skills and things like that so there was a mix there was a couple of like ethical scenarios in there as well and there was also a role-playing one I think the most important part for me about it was the beforehand I um I just looked into current animal welfare things. issues and like yeah yeah, just that's what was in the news fair. at the time. Like, I remember badger culling was a big thing. Oh, yeah, that's a big thing. And like, TB testing was a big thing that year. Mm -hmm. um, so I made sure that I you know looked into that and I think even though I did that I don't know how helpful it was because a lot of the questions I got asked were more about my opinion or how I'd interpret something um, I mean it was different at Nottingham at Nottingham they asked me a lot more questions about current affairs okay. at the time but RVC was more about me rather than what I knew about everything ah, going on, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I guess they want to know you as a person and your thought process and thing. Okay. And uh, when you applied, so you did a diploma, was it like a graduate entry program or...? So I... Um, it was the first year at my college that so many people had applied because I feel like it was the first year that universities were starting to accept it as a qualification. Okay. Because um, I know that the three I applied to university wise were the only three that were accepting it as a qualification at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was put on the waiting list for RBC. Yep. Um, and I had a lot of friends um, who had gotten in and already received their offers. So there was a period of about four or five months because they heard in like December and I didn't hear until late May that I got an offer mm -hmm. and they were the, like the worst five months oh. because everyone, I was happy for everyone that had got in obviously, but I was there like 
still hadn't heard anything mm-hmm. um so that was hard but i made it eventually so that's good that's what matters and you're in like your penultimate year so almost yeah done. well that's the thing i've made it this far so <laughs> that's awesome yeah, i must be doing something right <laughs> <laughs> yep yep so in terms of your applications how much work experience did you do for rbc you have to do 70 hours at a vet practice seven zero yeah what <laughs> like 10 full days i think oh, okay, to do. so either okay. 70 hours or 10 full days yeah at a vet and then the same again in a non-clinical environment so i did three weeks at one vets for the non-clinical i um worked at a uh, riding stables i've been working at one for years anyway and okay. they i counted that towards my time because it was within you know you've got to be a certain number of years hasn't it before mm-hmm. i did some work with the riding for the disabled as well all right nice already um, volunteered for them and also did rspca and uh, an activity farm i know a lot of people who did lambing and stuff mm-hmm. which i think at the time if i'd have known I, i probably would have tried to get some lambing and did they ask you about your work experience during the interview no oh okay so I, i yeah i think i got asked about something ethical it was on a litter of puppies and she wanted to get rid of the white one because she thought it was gonna be death and it was just you know what i thought about it and what i what i'd advise her as the client and mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. like that um but my actual work experience never came up what about the personal statement did they talk about your personal statement in the interview <laughs> not really not really yeah <laughs> okay so it really varies no. like certain universities place like a lot of importance on personal statements or whatever like some don't mm. so yeah that's yeah that's really no, from what i can remember there was like one where i had to compare two different skulls Mm-hmm. and say why one was a predator and why one was a prey kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so in your opinion, do you have any tips and advice for people applying to RVC? Well, I think the problem with the RVC interview was that there wasn't much you could have done to prepare for it. I mean, I think it, it is important to go over current things that are going on Mm-hmm. in the veterinary world because I think there's always the possibility that it could come up yeah. and just having that information there I think makes you feel more confident going into it as well yeah they just want to know about you okay. as an individual they want to know how you work in a team in your group interview mm-hmm. and I think it's that's the important thing to remember is that they're they're watching how you communicate mm-hmm. and how you come across and how well you work in a team it's not necessarily about how much knowledge you have mm-hmm. at the time because they're not expecting you to go in knowing everything about being a vet yeah <laughs> that's yeah. not what it's about so now we're going to move on to the next section which is generally how do you find rvc how did you find their teaching style and how did you find uh, learning that is it like very practical or is it more theoretical things like- overall I've, i've loved it i really have i mean the first two years are in camden there is a lot of dissections and practicals in those two years. I love the way they kind of organized the course because you'd have your teaching and then you'd have your practical after it. So all the information is fresh in your head at the time and it makes it kind of solidifies what you're seeing in pictures mm-hmm. in real life. The second year was definitely the hardest for me. I think just content wise, mm-hmm. um, it was at that point where you you know you're going to be clinical soon, but you're not quite there yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and just all the extra information that you get given, there's a lot of parasites. <laughs> and I'm not a parasite person. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But no, overall, I thought the course in preclinical was brilliant. The way they structured it so that it all kind of roped in, roped in together and all led on from one another. Third year is when we moved up to Hawkshead in Potter's Bar. Okay. Um to our other campus. We did a animal handling exam at the beginning beginning of third year. So we did a lot of dog sheep cow handling when you're in first and second year it can feel a bit like oh why are we learning this like what relevance does that have to being a vet mm-hmm. but then when you get into your clinical teaching you realize that actually it is it is relevant it all links in together yeah. and i think the way that they do that is just really beneficial because at the time you're a bit like oh well seems a bit pointless yeah. but then when you get into third year you realize just how useful it is mm-hmm. we started our clinical skills teaching as well so that's where we get to go into the um live building and practice like our gloving and gowning and your injecting and um you know fluid therapy and all the rest of it to prepare you for EMS. Mm-hmm. So in your preclinical years that's years one and two, right? 
Mm-hmm. Do yeah. you have practicals with live animals? Yeah, so, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention those. <laughs> I forgot those were a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have calves and horses that come onto the Camden campus every now and again so that we can do live animal practicals with them. We were doing locomotor at the time and then hmm. they brought in the calves and the horses and we could practice palpation and uh, you know, right. figure yeah. out where everything was. Mm-hmm. And then we had a like a cardiovascular one. Mm-hmm. So we just all get started stethoscopes out and have a listen and you know get bitten by a calf and stuff it was great (laughs) good times great fun so in clinical years do you still have lectures at the same time as your practicals we finish lectures just before fourth year exams so now it is just rotations research project and then finals the only other lectures we'll have now will be the electives but that's the extra info that's kind of above the content of the course oh wow yeah. so you have fourth and fifth year is a lecture free year like two lecture free years yeah pretty much i mean off. yeah apart from the september till end of november of fourth year yeah then that's that's we've learned the content that they want us to know by that point and then we yeah sit our exams and then if they go okay then we end up on rotations oh, okay Cool, that's really interesting because in Cambridge, um, our sixth year is the only one where it's lecture free. How big is your cohort? Oh, like over 300. Oh, wow, there's a lot of people. I don't know how many of us joined to begin with, mm-hmm. but then we joined with the Gateway students. Mm-hmm. And then the accelerated from the four year course join us in third year and the people who have intercalated. So yeah. by third year, the year is like just grown considerably (laughs) wow do you find that better or i mean i it doesn't bother me in the slightest like i think you're always meeting new people and i quite like that i quite like meeting new people throughout the whole course yeah how are you finding living do you live where do you live in first and second year and how is it like going to and from university so i lived in intercollegiate halls in first year Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of my friends live just with other rvc students in the rvc only halls but i lived in a new one that was for students from all the different universities in London, which I found, I loved it because it meant I made a lot of friends from different universities who were studying completely different things to me, which sometimes was just really nice to go back to the flat and have a conversation with someone that wasn't Betty. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Second year, I lived in a flat with the girl I lived with in first year. That was like private, private, um, we had a private flat. So I guess you're not Um, guaranteed accommodation for all the years but only the first year yeah most most people tend to live in halls just for their first year mm-hmm. and then move out of halls mm-hmm. after that there is a student halls on site at our hawkshead campus which is the one in potter's bar which i know a lot of people live in final years i think quite a few of them because they don't know with their rotation schedule and how much is rent usually <laughs> <laughs> a lot yeah, <laughs> London price. That is honestly the the one thing about living in London that I struggled with. Okay, was the rent, just yeah. the price. It's a lot better now. I've moved out to Potter's Bar because it is a lot cheaper. But in Central, yeah, it's um, my rent in halls in first year. So that included everything. Was a hundred and ninety ish. One nine zero a week. A week. Yeah. For like bills and Wi-Fi and everything. Yeah, and then second year it was about 150, I think, a week, including bills and stuff, because we had to pay them separately then. Um, but we were really lucky with our flat; we managed to get one off previous RVC students, and it was a lot cheaper than a lot of the others we'd seen. What are the costs of commuting? In first year, I live 15 minute walk from oh, uni, okay. so I just walked it every day. Second year, it was about a 20 minute walk in the other direction, <laughs> so I just walked then as well. Okay. Um, so third in fourth year I've lived in the same place there's five of us um, in a flat they've got shuttle buses so the university provide free travel on shuttle buses and they do like a certain number of stops around Potter's Bar and then take you to campus so we haven't had to pay any travel I do know though that one of the accommodations in central London is quite far out they have to pay for like the tube and stuff so it obviously adds to your whatever what you're already paying so third and fourth year now in Potter's Bar you use the free shuttle bus do you think as an rvc student you need a car so i in first and second year definitely not yeah i don't central london and a car i don't yeah that's true the only time it would have been handy was when i was like traveling home again but there's so many links like i got a um, nationwide coach home Mm -hmm. not nationwide that's a bank what are they called Uh, national express (laughs) 
right? <laughs> That's no express. <laughs> I got you, I got you. <laughs> Transport links everywhere just meant that you really didn't need a car. In third year, I did bring my car up with me to Potter's Bar. Not that I need it whilst I'm to actually commute to uni, but I think when it comes to rotations, it will probably come in very handy because we get given a parking permit. When we start rotations, you don't get one up until that point. And just things like shopping and things like that are just so much easier being able to drive to the local supermarket because there is one close, but not close enough to walk with a weekly shop. So what is the student life like in RVC and what is the nightlife? Any societies and clubs you join? It's brilliant. <laughs> I mean, central London is fantastic for that sort of thing. I mean, it's not even necessarily the clubbing. It's just, there's just so many things to do. Like the theatre in first year, they ran them, um, our accommodation ran a um, theatre trip for us all to go and see Les Mis, or wow, a certain number of us. Wow. And it was just brilliant. Like, I'm really into my theatre. Mm. So for me, it was really exciting to be there. Yeah, well, I mean, the nightlife here is, is brilliant. It's not just clubbing, like the pubs, and there's some like niche little restaurants restaurants and I think there's even axe throwing somewhere and <laughs> axe what axe throwing oh axe throwing what's <laughs> so random <laughs> I know I know and like ping pong places wow. and it is good I think two years in central London though was enough for me like I got used to the hustle and bustle of living in a big city but personally I really did then enjoy the move out to Potter's Bar just because it is in the country and it's just so different I mean there isn't as much to do and I do sometimes miss having that ease of getting into central London because we're only a 15 minute train from central still but it's the getting back if you want to go on a night out the getting back is just non-existent oh I see <laughs> um, or you'd have to get like a really expensive uber what about don't your, feel um, the extracurriculars like your societies sports and gym facilities so there's a gym on both campuses which are free to use I used the one in Camden when I was in first and second year when we moved to Potter's Bar we actually live opposite the big gym and swimming pool that's in Potter's oh. Bar and they do quite a good student discount over half price the normal membership so we now go there me and my flatmates I joined hockey as well in my second year yeah I wasn't really a sporty person <laughs> apart from horse riding until I joined RVC and then one of our flatmates said oh yeah you should join hockey with me so we're like oh, okay we'll come along never picked up a hockey stick before in my life <laughs> and ended up really enjoying it so I've been doing that now for the past three years and it's not just the sport it's just a new group of people again and the socials that you have and like the tour where you go abroad with each other it's just all of it is just great fun really enjoying it I definitely recommend joining something when you go to university. It's good to hear that there's loads of different um, opportunities to get involved even though you're like a beginner. So I was just wondering what is the work-life balance like and do you find that you have enough time to do all these different activities? Um, yeah I think so definitely I think so our Wednesday afternoons are free I don't know I think most universities are if for sport oh, Cambridge isn't we have uh, no Wednesday um, afternoon off Sally no, no. <laughs> all lectures finish by like midday that are Wednesdays afternoons for sport so that's when we play hockey we also have training a couple of times a week as well on the weekend and on a Monday evening and I don't feel like doing that gets in the way of the course at all like I think there are points in the year when you have to prioritize the teaching over things like that but I think it is possible to have a balanced work life where you can have this social life and go out and enjoy yourself but at the same time actually knuckle down when it matters yep yep <laughs> I think it's important that you you don't get bogged down because I definitely did that in first year I got quite ill around exams exam time because I was just so stressed and all I was doing was sitting in doing work and revising and then I realized that actually that's not healthy <laughs> it's definitely important to take time for yourself yeah and taking breaks is more productive yeah if you're just yeah which tired, I've... you just sit there and reading you're not gonna help anything you're not gonna help yourself exactly you can read the same sentence over and over again or just take 10 minutes yeah to switch your mind off like yeah. it took me a while to realize that though but when I did it definitely helped Okay, so what about EMS? How is EMS organised at, uh, at RVC? Yeah, so we organise EMS ourselves. There is a database though of previous placements and contact details that people have been on and they can recommend or not recommend the placement. We also have quite a few Facebook pages for things like that. There's a specific AHEMS page for your preclinical placements that a lot of people advertise for their farmers on for like lambing or dairy placement. I've had really good placements so far and I think that's because all of mine have been through recommendations of people who have been before. 
Ah, I see. Well, for us, yeah. we get emails from the vet school, and then for me, I I tend to ask my seniors if they have recommendations, and then they recommend it to me. But yeah. Ah,、uh, okay. Last thing about RVC, how are they in terms of supporting like mental health of the students and providing any funding for people facing hardship or things like that? I don't know the ins and outs of the funding. It's not something I myself have had to look into, but I know that it is there because we get the emails.、Um, mm-hmm. What was the other question? Oh god.、Um, what was the other question about mental? Oh,、health? mental health. Yes.、Mm. So we have a counselor that comes on site every month. I want to say, and you can arrange an appointment to go and speak to them if you need the help. We also get regular updates from the advice center in emails, just talking about you know what support there is if if we need it,、um, which I think is is helpful to know. Mm-hmm. Um, so、I think overall, yeah, the there's the supports there if you need it. Yeah, they do a lot of work to support students and things like that. We all know how stressful the vet degree can be sometimes, so it's nice to know <sighs> that there's a support to fall back on. I guess that was pretty much it about RVC in general. So the last section is about you. If you have any career aspirations, things you want to share about, I definitely am leaning more towards small animals and also exotics. I find exotic medicine really interesting. Just because I feel like it's so varied. I also really like neurology. Ah, okay. And I'm actually one of my tracking rotations is in neuro, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that goes. I'm BSAVA senior student rep、okay. at RBC. I'm not bigging it up just because I'm the rep. But... <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug. Yeah, <laughs> shameless. <laughs>、um, I definitely think it's worth students joining because I mean it's free,、yep. and you get access to so many resources and webinars and. Information that is just really helpful. Yeah, I downloaded like, the、um, BSAVA manual on my phone because it's free. Yeah, that's yeah. there. They've got the app with the yeah with the formularies and stuff on it, and it's just brilliant. They've also got like a their conference coming up and stuff, which counts towards EMS. So oh, they're、know. the student focus. Yeah,、oh, yeah. Sign, I've signed up. <laughs> Have you? I'm going、yeah. as well. <laughs> nice, nice. But also AVS. I think when that gets back up and running again, the congress is a brilliant event to attend.、Mm-hmm. Um, I attended it in first year when it was at Bristol because I did the exotic stream when I went. Because you, I don't know if you've been before, but you pick yeah, which、I've、stream been, you want. I actually been to the one. Yeah. So I was on the committee.、Oh. Um, what stream did you do? Oh, I, I think it's the we joined quite late, so I think we got put into the the extra stream. Oh、like, uh, yeah, yeah, the miscellaneous one. Miscellaneous <laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> It was really good.、Cool. Um, so I, I was like co-lead on the exotic stream.、Mm-hmm. I helped organise the lectures and stuff for that, and it was just a brilliant event. Like I just love it. I'm really sad that there was not one. There wasn't one this year, but in person because the lectures and the practicals are just brilliant. And then you've got free, free course dinner. Yeah, the, the ball on Saturday. The was so fun.、Oh. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It's just a really good event. And it's not just about the drinking, you know. It's、oh, not like yeah, sports actually, weekend. Yeah, you learn stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I love sports weekend as well.、Yeah. But congress is just you. You're getting. I don't know. It's just more educational than sports weekend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You still yeah. get to have fun at the same、yeah. time.、Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely recommend those. Yep. So join BSAVA and join AVS, guys. <laughs> yeah. So I guess、uh, last, last, last question is: If you could turn back time, what would you tell your younger self about applying to vet school? Um, to keep going, I guess, and to believe in myself. Because there was definitely a point when I failed my AS levels when I honestly didn't think it was ever going to happen, and I think not to be too hard on myself, because you go, I feel like you go from being a high achiever in school and at college, and then vet school just kind of throws you in at the deep end a bit if you're not prepared for it, and I think that's something I wish I'd knew before. That don't be too hard on myself because everyone's in the same boat. Everyone finds it overwhelming at times,、yep. and you know I mean, you, you've got the support there if you need it, and everyone can get through it. So yes, nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. That's I, I bet a lot of people will feel more reassured hearing that. Yeah, through this video.、Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Louise. Thank you for spending time, and all the best in your fourth year and fifth year. Thank you very much. It was nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye.